Good evening. Um, I'd like to bring the Finance Committee meeting to order. Um, the subject of this meeting is to discuss our capabilities to bringing a more transparent, um, to track the spending within the town, within specific departments over time and determine exactly what we feel you know, within those departments would be the most transparent uh, method of to bring that forward to the public. Um, this, this discussion started some time ago and um, has been battered about. Um, and right now, I just want to um, refer to um, a piece that I um, that we have in front of us, um, specific, specifically that transparency in government is the principle of allowing those affected by administrative decisions to know about the results and about the process that led to decisions. That's full transparency. Now, when it comes to the Finance Committee, obviously our transparency um, has to lean towards finances, has to lean towards monies, has to lean towards what's being spent, how it's being spent, and what that expenditure looks like over time. Um, when you look at our role, the Finance Committee role, um, this is in the Massachusetts Finance Committee Handbook. Um, our chief responsibility is to present a yearly balanced budget to the town and serve in a watchdog capacity for the town on all town finances. And I can't say that we always do that. I, I think that for the first, um, the first part of that being the budget, I, I think we're there every year and that we're effective in doing that. Um, Following that, I, I think there's a tailing off of our um, involvement, and we'd like to, I'd like to discuss that and where that's going. Um, when you think about the finance committee, um, we look at we look at the expenditures all the time. We have the information at our fingertips um, to let taxpayers know how their tax dollars are being spent. And I would like to, um, I would like to, for us to discuss how best to go about doing that. Um, one idea that I had was simply using the town website, and the finance committee page on that website, to highlight expenditures in various departments over time, whether it's a five-year rolling, um, whether it's just a year to year, um, you know, we can have that discussion how that's going to look. Um, which departments are we going to take a look at and how and how do we look at those departments? Uh, personally, I think obviously the largest expenditures are the ones that we go to first, meaning school, the police, fire, highway, and total town government. Um, so my vision here, and I think our discussions prior to this, um, if I'm no longer on this committee and I'm just a taxpayer in town, I would really love to have the ability to go into our website, press a button, and take a look to see what our cost per student has been over the past five years and where it's going this year compared to where it has been last and the year before that. Um, I just think that's something that taxpayers have a right to know and have a right to be able to look at whenever they want. Um, and we have those numbers, we have that capability. Um, so that's where this meeting is. So I'll throw it out there um, for general discussion, um, do you think this is worth our effort? Let's, let's just... What do you mean, worth the effort? 
is we're the effort on our part to crunch the numbers, um, make sure the numbers are correct, make sure that we're getting the data that we need to get. Well, that's where the transparency comes in because I don't think we get the data that we always need. Well, I think we're making decisions a lot of times based on, I'll use hearsay for lack of a better, me to think of a better word right now. Okay. But if we can get the numbers, the right numbers, for instance. I think the right numbers are important for the taxpayer, then they can make their decision based on our recommendations. Right. I mean, yeah. Right. We just make recommendations. Yeah, I know. That's all we do. <clears throat> that, that's, I mean, that right. But, I mean, it's what, what the taxpayer decides. It's not a, it's a, it's a, it's a I, right. I can afford everything that they put out and then, then some, but I'm not going to say yes, yes, yes. I'm going to ask the question for the other person. Right. I can't be the voice, have a voice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have to gather more information. Yeah, you know, the gathering the information is one thing. That's another thing when they withhold it. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not pick on town government administration. The last four months of the year, we find out people's job descriptions are going to change. Somebody doesn't want to work as much. This is going to go on, and we're going to hire an administrative assistant. I don't have any problem with that, but I just think the last four months of the year is a lousy time. Uh, you know, a year ago, you can't plan into that. But no, that was we didn't, no. I don't think we knew that well, that's how things were going to work a, out the way they did. We knew we needed an administrative person. I don't know why you're calling it an administrative assistant. That's what you are. Yeah. But that, that uh, whole uh, ordeal was brought out by COVID. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Period. Just like you know, paying more money to the health district and everything else. There's certain things that were caused by COVID, and now we have to deal with them. The data I still don't think that the job description changing happened all of a sudden. I think it was going to come on, and it was like, let's do it now because the, the, our time frame to the right. I have any rational decisions is, is short. Yeah. yeah, it's like the school. The school is not any different. They, no. That's not any different at all. They they come. They got extra money for the track. Okay, let's do it, something else with it. That's not right. That's not right. That's, no. I don't care how you look at it. That's not right. That is um, the data that we get, and our goal here for this meeting, is, I'm hoping, is that we come to some kind of understanding that it's important for the taxpayer to be able to see what is being spent in the departments, the most costly departments that we have within the town, to see what we actually spend in, in this year versus last year versus the year before, how that cost is changing. I agree, but what do you think? So, <clears throat> are you speaking in terms of on an annual basis or a month to month basis? Annual basis. Okay. That's what, that's what that, that's I'm coming up with. If it's month to month, I think that would be pretty onerous no. and no. next to impossible to I agree. It's current information that's accurate. Mm -hmm. So, Paul, what, what do you hope to, to gain from doing this other than being more transparent? But what, what, what is going to result from all of this? Well, I think the result in all this will certainly be that you'll, um, you'll provide education to the taxpayer. Um, you will have everyone understand, everyone will be on the same page in terms of understanding what the yearly costs in various departments are to the individual taxpayer. Now you can look at, you know, you can look at the, um, you know, the warrant, you can look at the budget and um, 
you know, look at those numbers, and, and that's all well and good. But after the meeting, there aren't a lot of, there isn't a lot of interaction between that budget and the taxpayers or the finance committee or the select board or anybody else in town. Once that meeting is over, that budget is signed, sealed, done, it's in the bag, and it's over until the next year rolls out, and then we pull it up again. Now, if you have a website, and on that website, and I'm just going to take this because it's out there. If we have dollars per student in Waitley Elementary School, and we can follow those dollars over time, and those dollars are accurate, and this is what comes out of taxation to pay for, for a student in the 2019, and then all of a sudden, next year, we have a gross increase per student. The taxpayer is going to ask questions. The taxpayer is going to wonder why. And those kind of questions hold everybody accountable. Anyone who's touched those monies or has anything to do with those monies is held accountable through the ultimate individual who's responsible for the payment, and that's the taxpayer. They pay everything. So I think that will in itself uh, create more interest within town, but it will also provide a service to the Waitley taxpayer that they do not receive now. Take that. So I, I still don't understand. Because uh, in and out, school choice. He just used the school as an example. Right, a right. better example would be the senior center. Senior smaller, center? That would be a way better example. Yeah, I think that, that is a, that's the number one. We've been trying to get that in full. We haven't, we've got to get close. Yeah, close yeah. Here. yeah there's, there's no question that, there has to be this has to be a lot of fine tuning as to the the data that we use, the point in time that we grab that data, and the comparative. What's the marker? In this case, in this example, it's an individual student. In the case of the police and fire, it could be just the total population in town. But one person, if you take the fire cost, if you take the police cost, and you take how many people in town, what does it cost to keep all of the residents of Waitley yeah. protected. protected? And what does, what, what does it cost for one of those individuals? Well, that, those costs and the ability to look at those costs in a single view will generate a lot of will generate a lot of questions in town, and that's what you need. That's democracy. Um, and But it's how we go about getting those, coming up with those values. If it's dollars per student, what day do we take that? Do we take that when the budget gets approved? We know how many students are in Waitley Elementary School. We know what was in their budget. We just do the math on that particular day and that's the value. Now it's going to change because this chart of students is school of choice. This, but for Waitley Elementary School students, this is what it cost us. Now, if we want to go to highway, no, we've had this discussion with Keith. Yeah, things change. Okay, but there is, there are miles submitted to the state. You go on the Department of Transportation website, and there are miles for the town of Waitley as there are for all towns. What's the total cost? Okay. And the other part of it is, um, you know, when do we come to bring all the costs together? For instance, if we look at um, we look, we look at schools, okay, we we look at cost per student and what's in the budget. Um, hopefully everything is there, including the benefit packages. Is that in there? 
don't know. Yeah. Um, well, what's the, true, what's the true cost? What's the true cost? Um, and if you look at the, high, the highway department, we have winter roads. We have yeah. um, a lot of machinery that they have to purchase, and they have to do this. There's no question. But those are all costs that are brought into the highway department for the town of Whaley. And what does that mean for, for costs over time? That's where I'm going with this. Health insurance and benefits is not part of the highway department's budget. It is in what we call uh, general government. No, it's not in general government either. There's no, it's in insurance, insurance and, benefits. and benefits. Right, right. right. So that we do, mm -hmm. we have access to that number. We could figure, you know, the highway Absolutely. department has three employees at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she could she could break out that number. Yeah, she typically does for the school, as opposed to the town. Okay, and schools don't have it's not in schools either, is it? Because that comes through the town. Yep. So, but when, like Frontier, is that in their general budget or is it in our budget? It's in their budget. Okay. So. Technically, we could take what we're paying at Frontier this year, and they, somebody can tell us how many students from Waitley are going to Frontier, yep. and we could figure out what the cost per student is. God bless you. To, to operate this total school. Yeah. Well, what it's costing Waitley to send their kids yep. to Frontier. Right. Right. Is there anything else, Brian, other than insurance and benefits that are shown separately instead of in the proper department, instead of part of police and fire and so on. The other fund is the retirement fund. Is the employee buyouts when people save their time and you have to buy them out. Well, that's a, <laughs> that's a one-off. So in you my opinion, everything needs to be gotten away from that. Pulled out of all no. these other buckets yes. yes. and right. put into the right department. You know, right. That department needs so to much show time all of them. Them. This is what it cost us to send one student to Whaley Elementary School because now we're taking insurance, benefits, salary, everything else. We're yeah. bringing it together, and this is the cost for, the, for that student. I don't think any of us have ever seen that number. I don't think we have either. Uh -huh. and, um, yes, Fred. Well, I, I I hear what you're saying, and and I, and I think it's it's going to be difficult to do this during the, the budget season. Or, or the three months or whatever you develop the budget. Uh, maybe this is something that needs to be done after the budget season or, or before the next budget. So if, if you're comparing one year to another, whether it's students, mileage or, or, or whatever, uh, you can tell that department there's a concern. Your numbers are going up or down and we want you to say, consider that in developing next year's budget. So we have an answer in the budget and you develop the budget based on that information, not coming back in, in, in uh, March or April and saying, oh, you're, you're too high for a number, so you gotta go back and reduce your budget. I, I think some I of that has agree, to happen with you more. during the year. Fred, right, which, which is why we are in that sweet spot right now. We are done with the budget. Right. Season. We're way in front of the next one. Right. So if, so what we can do is we can look at the budget that is ending as well as the one that's just beginning and project out and be able to show departments where they are with regard to the markers. And the markers in this case would be students, lives in town, Miles, um, number of employees, and um, our median and mean salaries for all employees, where we are at. And um, I believe those are very functionable numbers. 
that people can grasp onto. But we have to make sure that they're right, um, and and we have to go about this the right way. Um, so, Brian, how difficult will it be to pull everything from these other buckets into the respective department so that the department shows everything? I, I mean, in terms of, so the biggest one would be group health insurance, right? Yep. In, in that that value is going to depend on the, the plan of, that the employee selects. Um, Changes. So those, it, it will change. Um, you know, if you have someone who's taking a, a family plan and then something happens and then they move to a single plan or somebody new comes in, you know, we're talking about ten thousand dollar difference probably. Mm -hmm. um, just happenstance, really, as it was in here, um, or, or whether someone elects to take out you know, group health insurance or not, it's going to fluctuate the budget. It, it could fluctuate by as much as sixty thousand dollars. Sure. Uh, but we have an explanation as to why that happened. Yeah. That's the key. Um, so in terms of in terms of pulling them out, I, I think that it's doable for sure. Um, but in terms of in terms of how we vote them, um, you know, we make we make one or well, we make four payments to group health insurance each year, and it tends to come from a, it's easier for it to come from a single account in terms of how it functions internally. But it doesn't mean that you can't represent them on the budget sheet. Yeah, that's. I understand where you're coming from. That the, the way the bill is paid, it comes out of a, a health insurance account. It doesn't come out of the school, the weight in the elementary school account, that's or correct. the highway department account. Mm -hmm. It comes out of the health insurance account. Right. And, but I think for what we're looking for is. You know, at the Waitley Elementary School, there's X number of teachers, and you know, so many of them have the family plan. Just there's a few on the single plan, whatever it is, and of the total town health insurance budget, X amount is belongs to the school department, the Waitley Elementary, and X amount belongs to the highway department, and X amount belongs to the police department, and right. X amount belongs to general government. Mm -hmm. However, it works out. And actually, you mentioned retirement. The retirement assessment from 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 Franklin Regional Retirement. Uh, I'm sure they could probably provide a breakdown at least by position. This is the 21st century. They can provide a breakdown. Oh no. You know, um, you know, and I I know we always go back and forth on this, and you know, um, having a job having a position um, that's paid through public funds versus having a position that's paid through private funds. Um, some Very often you cannot compare them. No. Okay. Because it's different, yeah. it's a different atmosphere. It's a different, um, it's just not the same. But what I can tell you is that, and I've never worked on the government side the nonprofit side. I've always worked on the for-profit side, and for, in the for-profit, when you get a job, when you offer someone a position, you offer them a compensation package. Yeah, it's not split out. You know what the value of that position you have is, salary, and the benefits, and what it means dollar-wise to the organization that you're working for. And um, and I think that's important for the taxpayer to understand that, and for everybody to understand that. Yeah. Um, so that's um, more of a global base, not individual, but more of a department, global department base. Yeah, I mean, we're never, ever going to The taxpayer see. doesn't need to see the individual. No, 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 no. oh gosh, that's no, never, never, never. Right. I'm just thinking on a on a total. If you have, you know, it's just averages. You got total employees. I think that's about all you could do with it. You you could take that whole insurance budget as it stands now, and break it down to x number of people. That exactly. It is funding, and use that per person average. Right. To apply to the different departments. 
I agree. Yeah. Something like that, it, it wouldn't be too bad to do. That, I think we could probably do yeah. pretty easily. And just take how many employees we have, school, You can't idea. get too involved in it with, no. with each, each department. No. has John, Joe, and Jack, and mm -hmm. one has... But once we get help, to that... One number. has little help. And, you know, it's, we, we have to do that as an average. When we get the average number for one employee, That's what if we'll this department has 10 employees... <clears throat> go by 10. By 10. This one has two, that number by two. So that's that's how... That part, I, I agree with that. Um, I think that, that could be done easy without really a lot of breakdown. I agree. Yeah. The cost per yeah. individual. Yeah. And I, you know, once this is done and we get a template for it, there isn't going to be a lot of manpower no, I would think in so. doing this over time on a continual basis. Because Brian's certainly got more to do. I'm, I'm, I'm not here to put more on his plate or Amy's plate. Um, um, and obviously, I would be. I would help as much as I can, and I would hope you know you guys might kind of step up to the plate and um, you know throw a little bit of time in. Uh, give me a little smirk over there. <laughs> I have all kinds okay. of great ideas. <laughs> I'm not sure but, I want to hear them. You know, as we roll this out, okay, this is just the beginning. This is just a discussion meeting. Um, what do you think about the departments that we're going to look at? Think it's too many? You think we should just start with two, or should we go with? I mean, I put four here. Are there six? Do you, um, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to bite off too much um, at the beginning. Well, the two, I think we just have to do major departments. I wouldn't get involved in no. Uh, Say breakfast committee and <coughs> well, small committees where you only got three or four on right. it, and they have a, they don't have a large budget. Mm -hmm. So you could either categorize it by anything over an X number of dollars in that budget, then we can itemize per person or something. Okay. But all the smaller departments that are under that, say ten thousand dollar cost, would not be broken down. Trying to do it to, with, um, you know, just looking at this list, the two big ones that stand out are the school and town government. Right. But town government. Yes, many departments. In, it, it includes, <coughs> you know, planning board, really? zoning board, oh, right. assessors. That's what I'm right. Those Those board that's, be in there. No, but they all fall under the oh, umbrella yeah. of that's, town government. That's true. When I thought of town government, the only two. Look at the list of stuff that's under town government. Both fire. But when I thought about them, it was really only, I mean, the the biggest cost of any organization, whether it's government or whether it's private, are the individuals that are there, yeah. um, drawing salaries. And um, outside of that, I mean, so when you look at, you know, I put this under town government, I, doesn't necessarily have to be there, but I really believe that over time we have to take a look at how many employees we have within the town, and if you look at the mean and median um, salaries or cost per employee, um, and you can watch that over time, yeah. how is that moving? Um, I think that's a, um, I think that's a worthwhile piece of information for everybody. Paul, um, I, as a as a taxpayer, I think that the, the two items that concern me the most right now, and you mentioned these during the annual town meeting, is is the budgets for the uh, senior center and for the Tritown Beach. Uh, I'll, I'll explain a little why they bother me because we I don't think we've seen the total cost, the total budget for both of them activities. They're, they're regional or multi-town activities like the school. We see the school budget. We see our share of the school budget. 
We see the SCAMS ambulance service, their total budget. We see Whiteley's share of it, but for the for the uh, Tritown Beach and and the senior center, I'm not sure we saw the total budget or what our share is. And you know, if we're we're I'll use the expression the, the tail wagging the dog. We're the small portion of, of these activities. And if we want to further promote them, like you're saying you're concerned the number of people going to the senior center, well, nobody knows. Well, what, what's the impact on, on, uh, on our budget? We don't know that either. I think it's it may be time to, since these two activities have budgets approved by Waitley and even other towns, to ask them, what's your final budget for this year? We want to see what it is after it's approved for all the towns. At least have that information to start with. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we're, we're missing that. We don't see that. And they ask for increases in Whaley's budget, or you're going to throw a CPA money at it. Well, we don't see the, the, the total. Fred, yeah. Fred, those departments you just cited are not material, though, in nature. They, they're not they don't significantly impact the, the tax dollar. No, but and I think I think what we're trying to start with are categories that significantly impact the tax dollar. Am I am I wrong, Paul? No, you're absolutely right. Uh, yeah, Fred, well, Fred, the you're, Fred, you're correct in that those budgets we have never seen it. Those budgets have never been transparent right. since I've been here, Tommy. No, never, never. And we've asked for them. But because of the size of the budgets, we've always kind of acquiesced to the um, um, uh, whatever, whatever they were asking for or something close to it. Now, for this particular um, uh, process that we have here, those two uh, budgets would, would not be part of this, but we will be looking at them more, more intently downstream there's no question about that but for right now um, I think and I think we're kind of in agreement here that um, that the larger budgets within the town are those that we need to put a marker on and that marker being cost per whatever that mark is and in many for the schools it's students um, for the highways, it's miles, and um, for town government, I, I think within town government, I think if we just look at employees and employee costs, um, I think that's a lot to uh, that's a lot to put on our plate right now. And if we can get through that, yeah, then we'll I think we'll be doing okay. But I think we're going to be open to <clears throat> criticism, though. By that's the job. By just selecting certain costs. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a category called general government. Yep. Yeah. If this category is consistent with other towns' category called general government, why don't we just include all of general government as the metric? And I'm not sure. I'm not sure I follow you on this. Well. They just use them all. And you just use all these departments. Just keep all oh, these departments you can, you together can. as one lump sum under yep. general government. Yep. And the cost of general government per whatever per number. person in town. Yeah. Yeah. You could do that. Yeah. You could do that. You're Otherwise, the, I'm afraid we're going to be open to criticism. Why did we pull this out? Why did we pull that out? Why you? Um, so how? So okay. So how would you? So would you include schools on the general government? No, no, no. That's okay. No. So you, so you just. So I'm, I'm sort of following this. Okay. So whatever is under general government, we take a look at those costs, right. and we. I think that would be a reason, reasonable approach. Sure. You, you know, we can give two answers: of what it's going to cost the taxpayer per taxpayer, and what it, what the cost is per person. Salaried individually, individual salary person yep. on that. Yep. Okay. What's, what's the total general government budget? What was it when you started? What was it when you started? Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. 
dumbest very little. But. Brian, do you remember? No. Um, that's overall. I'm just seeing all these top individual budget. pages, but yeah, where's the? Uh, don't add up to it. I didn't total. bring the. Uh, did anybody I didn't bring the other? I know what you're talking about. Anybody bring the budget? <laughs> Those categories for example, recreation services. Right, that's what I'm going to use for a number. Why, wouldn't, why couldn't we find a metric for that entire grouping? That, and then public health, which includes Florida Health, Health Agents, Solid Waste, Franklin, I mean, either all or nothing there. Public safety, which in, are you wanting fire department and police department separately? That's, um, we could do them together, we could do them separately. Um, I, I just don't know how you... Um, trying to see if we can find some consistency with the existing budget categories. I know on general government, over time, that has expanded. Oh, yeah, but there have been, you know, but, but that's okay. Because yeah, we can because explain it. Yeah, you can explain it. And, right. you know, then we get... You know, we got a town administrator, but you know, we get grants for Williamsburg Road, we get grants for the sure. water in town, we right. get grants for this, we right. get right. you know, so you can and that's justify that's that. okay, you know. But it's five oh eight five oh eight. Five oh eight. Five oh eight under general government. So what's the you know, you could do cost per resident, mm -hmm. you know, on that five hundred and eight. Now the other thing is that's how do we get, where do we get the number for population within the town? It fluctuates, but there's Which a ballpark number. 1,600? Yeah, here right town census. Yeah. yeah, town census. It changes, but I used, I plugged in 1,600. That's $317.50 per person for general government. That's the 508 divided by 1,600. Okay. Yeah. Per taxpayer. Per no, because per resident. Per, per resident. resident. So we're not but that doesn't include business. Right. Right. Now see now you now it can get more now than you now see that is something That's to factor per, in. Per Whaley resident. Mm -hmm. You could figure out how many households or how many well, taxpayers. Let's not get into breaking it down that way. Okay. Just say, Whaley resident, period. Right. Yeah. Taxpayer, not taxpayer, child, not child. It's going to get too convoluted. Right. If, yeah. If so, Whaley okay. resident. Um, you know, if if next year you do this and that number is for something, well, then you got to have an explanation. Right. Somebody's got to have an explanation of why it is so high. Now, I don't think things are going to fluctuate that much, to be honest. They shouldn't. I, I, you know, I... I and I think not not that dramatically. Not that dramatic. Yeah, no. Okay. And but over time, you'll be able to determine and take a look at the costs per marker within your town. Yeah. Um, on the departments that that we want to go forward with. Um, and do we so? Anything more than this? Schools? You can make it as complicated as you want. Yeah. Should it be police and fire or should it be? It should be, er it should be everything because as the population decreases or increases, you should be able to explain those adjustments. If your number per person is going up and your population is decreasing, there's a problem. Yeah, absolutely. But I think in terms of like the safety, <coughs> In terms of putting police and fire in the same bucket, well, you know, the fire, we got a lot of volunteers. You know, these guys only get paid based on the fire that they go to. We've got how many full time employees on do they have one? The fire department? Yeah. None. Well, chief. He's part time. He's part time. And he doesn't yeah. I don't even know if he he gets paid a yearly stipend. I do not know if he gets paid. He's almost too old. 
Uh, you've got two more years to go. Yeah. Well, and I think he gets paid for call. Okay. okay. Well, you can so you compare that to the police. Now the police have two full timers, two full times, part time paid employees. I don't know how they work. Equivalent. Yeah. It's another FTE, I think. Okay. So they're full time equivalent, right? So that that's the way to look at it. So you technically there's three full timers. Okay. That's what it adds up to. So, you know, looking at this discussion, we feel comfortable with total government, including everything that's included within total government. Yeah, I think we're just we keep good. it at that. Yeah. Um, we split police and fire, or we want to put them together? I think you split them. Okay. There's two ways to look at it. If we neither one of them are a constant cost year over year. It's all relevant to fires or accidents right. or right. incidents. So that it's a changing But when you have cost. when you have a budget and you have a town meeting and the budget gets approved, that's a number. That number is not changing. And so we can take that number and we know how many people are in town. Yeah. That's the cost per person for that coming year. Police the same way. Schools, highway. We have a number that came that was approved on town floor and that number is the number we use. They like to buy it. public safety. See, we could like the the fire budget is eighty thousand dollars, whatever it is, and you can take that number and divide it by sixteen hundred and say the fire department budget is that costs the resident each resident this much money. God forbid that there's a, a major catastrophe or a big fire or something, and. He, you know, he comes back and wants twenty thousand dollars more. Well, then you you have an explanation. So they're they have a basic budget to start with. The police department is a little bit different in that they have a, a larger budget. Right. They they have very they have you know three employees, three full time employees. We're going to call it. And what. As a rule, they would not come. We give them enough money to do their job. Right. They would have never come back to us looking for more money that I can remember. So the only the only reason that they would come back and look for more money is if something happened to a vehicle. Right. And hopefully that's covered by insurance. Right. So, yeah. We got that item too. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so when. So we're in agreement that that we're working with the dollars that were approved in the budget yep. for the given year, right? Yep. And from there, we can utilize population number that we have and those numbers and come out with um, a single cost. Yep. Police and fire, we're going to separate that? Yeah. I would, but we'll that's just my opinion. I don't think it's that complicated. Oh, well, most numbers they come up with easy. The only thing we've got to get included is health insurance. With health. Right. Yeah. For I the mean, most part, uh, health and retirement costs, uh, uh, disability costs, mm -hmm. disability costs. Yeah. See, the they fire, uh, the, the police, not the workman's fire. comp. Yeah. All that's got to get included. <laughs> All got to be carved out and put into the proper right, right. And categories. I, and are, are, I, are we wasting our time? I think. Yep. And I think we're. Um, I think we're doing that. If, um, if it can be done. Yeah. I, I still haven't heard if all this can realistically be done. Um. I think it's the it, it's the insurance and benefits side of it. That's the kicker. That we. Can we take that and apply it to 
the individual departments or as dan had suggested we take a look at the number of employees who utilize that total cost insurance and benefits and then just get an average per employee and then assign that number to the individual to I think individual it's a lot department to trying to break it down complete sure. by department. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be yeah. All right. I mean, I, th I think that's the most difficult part of this because I, I think the other side of it is, you know, we're, we're probably going to be doing, you know, the bulk of this and then giving it to Brian for him to look out over as to whether it's accurate or not. And then, and then following that, we have to work with somebody to get it onto the website. Uh, I mean, we're, we're obviously not in, in any, anywhere near that now, but... We will get there, um, but first, let's. You know, we have the decision that these are the total government. We'll use everything that's on, that's in the list. Um, in terms of um, insurance and benefits, we'll get one number, and we'll divide that by the number of employees, um, and that's our, that's the individual employee. Go by that base for all employees. You right. Can't break them down for No, you can't. I think no. that would be that'd be a tough row. Um, so um, we'll need the secretary. Um, <laughs> well, I hope not. Brian. Okay. What do you see as the downfall here? What do you see as the Um, so in, in terms of getting back to something that Jim said, in terms of if we want to try to compare, get the numbers, and then we want to try to compare, let's say, to other municipalities, I think some of that's done for us by DLS. Um, you know, after at the end of each fiscal year, each town submits what's called Schedule A, um, and that's a breakdown of of actual expenditures by category. Um, so each municipality is reporting that. Some may report a little bit different, um, but the categories are, are standardized mm -hmm. by municipality. It, I, I think it's unlikely that our general government is going to look, you know, I, I think there's going to be a lot, a lot of dissimilarities between towns in terms of how, the, how they, what they plug in the, uh, the term uh, general budget. government. What's included um, in general government. Yeah, I can understand um, that. So the breakdowns are. <laughs> so if we're going to sort of standardize what we're looking at, the uh, US has a great website, it's municipal uh, municipal finance trend dashboard. Um, it, it does a lot of that for us. Uh, I, I think. If, if we're going to ever look at regionalizing more town services, like we already have, you know, I'll use the most recent example is the SCEMS ambulance service. You know, the, the level of service we're getting for the cost is, is exceptional. We could never get that on our own. If we're going to try to combine other town functions, whether it's police, fire, or I, I don't know what else, uh, recreation, whatever, with other towns, I, I think it's important for a finance committee to show the town that it's a reasonable way to go. That that's the uh, a town board that, that can provide the data to show people. Uh, otherwise, if, if we can't manage, I'll go back to the senior center and and the uh, uh, Tri Town Beach. If we can't manage them on a regional basis with other towns. Why should the town people vote to regionalize other functions? Yes, these are small amounts, but it's still the 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 concept of regionalizing to get to get uh, a, a better budget, lower costs, and also the level of service. We got to look at what services are we getting. And again, the ambulance is a good example. And I don't think Whaley can continue to do this at the same 
same uh, cost and provide the level of service that, that people want, people expect. That's what they're looking for. What service are we getting from the town? You can compare dollars and all, but it, it comes down to what are what did people want? Right. Yeah, I agree, Fred, and I and I and I think that um, I think that's the consensus with the finance committee is that is, is that people want to know what value there is for their tax dollar um, in each of the departments. So, um, moving on, um, are we? We kind of have a framework here as to what this thing's going to look like. Or try to look like. Okay. Do you see us having a meeting coming up for anything that we have to reserve on transfer yeah. after the first of the year? Anybody? If I had to guess, I would say yes. Probably for the planning board. Okay. Uh, they have blown through there with all the marijuana applications. I think they've gone through their staffing allocation. Okay. Okay. Put out from that. So sometime after the first of July, we would have to meet anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we'll no. weave more of this into that meeting um, as we um, as we develop, you know, and we'll have some emails back and forth and and sort of get a feel of how this thing is going to shake out. Um, we don't have any real evolve. specifics now. Evolve is a better word. Evolve is a better word. Evolve. Shake out is probably not what I wanted, but it just happened. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I think that's good. The other piece of this, um, there is a calendar on here that comes from the Finance Committee Handbook, Massachusetts Finance Committee Handbook. and. Um, it, it, it sort of gives a guidance as to um, um, the meeting and by month and what needs to happen. Now, some of this we're obviously already doing. Um, um, it, we're real heavy from December, well, January through March, I guess, April, probably more February through uh, April for us is, um, but I was wondering if looking at this, Brian, if looking at this is is this is this something we could do or, you know, for instance, if I look if I look in here, it says when October, November, review departmental budgets. Um, now that's something you do, and. Would we have any? I request the I request their budget. You know? Right, you request the budgets, and um, um, do you see any um, role for the finance committee um, to meet outside of the months that we're meeting in? At the end, or about that work. Should we do something at the end of August? Should we do something in September? I mean, in terms of budget development, I think a lot of our budgets are are, are pretty stable. The majority of them are pretty stable. I mean, it's the biggest yeah. ones that, that we hold our breath for in school. Right. Um, and I don't know if there's a way to, to get their budget sooner. Um, I know that they're always waiting for, I think they're waiting for the cherry sheets and, and data from Daphne in terms of school choice and things like that. Um, so I think they're kind of constrained right. um, as to when they're going to get their budget to us. I think the thing we, we've got to pursue more, and I've asked for this for a number of years, is capital planning has got to start earlier. So we can do something with capital planning other than one meeting. Yeah. You sit here to, to start in November to start that process. Yep. Which Brian does. But, hey guys. But we don't get the results back until January or February. Yeah. It, 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 I think it's got to be sooner than that. And that would help us in two ways. We could we would get 
a chance to review those capital items a little deeper, number one. And number two, I think it would help in a 10-year capital plan plan mm -hmm. to get it laid out the way it right. should be. Yeah. So but how you, do you change that? Well, it's. I think uh, you send out the notice when? December? Um, well, we had changed it in November before COVID started. Okay. We, we did that last year. We, we tried, 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 we tried, tried to put it up. It when it was warmer. And, uh, I, I think we just got to move up the return deadline so that... Yeah, it's more of a transparency thing. They wait and see what where the money's at, what's going to happen, and say, well, what kind of toys we can have well, for it. That's, that's their problem. That's, that's, part, of that's part of it. Yes. We, we well, want to get it. Capital planning should not be involved in their year-to-year -year or yearly budget. Year-to-year, -year, yes, but not year. You're not the yearly budget. Yeah. I mean, uh, this should be something capital, which is separate from the budget they're working with, every department. Oh, so uh, I think we should get it sooner. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not a department head, then. Well, for the most part. Well, that's a suggestion that you'll you'll have to make and run it by the capital planning. Um, select who's there's a selectman's representative. Um, well, I, I do know that. I mean, have, we have had times when capital planning wasn't, hadn't, couldn't come up with with a number for us, in, you know, in certain areas. So I, I think that would be very helpful. Um, so, um, okay. Even if they can't come up with a number, they know what they need. Yeah. 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 That should be in the. We need to know what we they do. need. That's we do. We do. That should be in their ten-year. In, the, in a 10 year plan. Yeah, right. gonna, I mean, there's emergencies, but you know, right? You, you should know five or 10 years out what that you're going to need for a major piece of equipment or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Brian knows he needs bigger screens. Yeah. Okay. Needs air conditioning. Oh, yeah. One step forward this year for buildings, and that is by putting some money to the side. And right. we got to continue doing that. So that we could plan some of these buildings, complete buildings, or roof, or whatever needs to be done capital wise. Stay ahead of the game. Okay. Um, as far as this is concerned, how we track the spend so that we afford the taxpayer of Waitley greater transparency in a very simple way. Um, I think this was a good start, and um, there'll be follow-ups, and um, you know we'll be in touch. Um, I'd like to. We have a motion to. I I I think we need to meet on a monthly basis until this is etched in stone and nailed down. And we're going to meet in July. We're going to be for here in January, and we're going to be discussing the same thing. I I, I just. If, if we're going to commit to this, I think we have to commit. Yeah. And I think we have to meet until and, and help Brian with this and get it done. Say this is what we want, Brian. It's all yours. Mm -hmm. No, no. Um, well, I know what he'll say if we tell him that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so we know we have a meeting coming in July. This okay. is June sometime. We so don't know when. So we know we're, that we're, that we're going to have still what separate time? Something coming up in July. So for our next meeting. Do um, you want to nail down the population? Okay. To make sure we know what number we're going to use. Um, Lynn or Amy will give you that information. Um, Tom? Amy, I'll be calling you. <laughs> <laughs> Tom? Yes. Fire and police? Yep. Take a look at the numbers. Yep. Take a look at, I mean, this is. I'll get a, I will also get the same number from Amy or Lynn and try to plug that in. Schools? Sure. Okay, beautiful. Um, you want Frontier or Waitley Elementary? Waitley Elementary. Okay. Um, 
I'll do uh, I'll do um, front frontier and Dan Highway. Okay. And work on miles and what their budget is. Yeah. He's going to come up with a number for health insurance. And and that's insurance right. And Brian's right. Brian's going to do the insurance and the benefits to see how that see what that looks like. So all of this is basically for the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. So I got. Um, okay. So I, I also just sent out the link to the um, EOS website, the Municipal Finance Trend Dashboard. Yep. So I would recommend that we take a look at that. Okay. Um, it has a lot, probably way more information than we want. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's in, um, at the very least, I think we should probably link this up, you know, put the link on the, on the finance rate page. Mm -hmm. um, it presents data and, and call for charts, it is a little call for charts. Right. And you can also click on something called the 351. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, it's a spread, it's, it's the data spreadsheet form. Um, there's a drop down menu, you're going to have to select waiting for each of them. Um, both the chart and uh, the spreadsheet, um, but that's there's all sorts of data on there from prop two and a half stuff, revenue expenditures, free cash. It, there's like six different categories. Um, there's just really a lot of data there, and um, so so the the expenditure part of it is based on Schedule A, so all that's going to be standardized. Um, for municipalities, and there's also ways to compare um, similar municipalities um, on that website. So okay. um, I think it's something we should take a look at and see if that's something that we would offer. Certainly, useful. That, that might be useful as well. You know, right now we're looking at four areas you know, to track, and what those areas are costing residents. Over time, and that's up. So general government, fire, police, highway, schools, schools, school, schools, okay. police and fire. Police and fire together? No, no, we're, no, we're, we're going to separate. But I, I should say so. There's one. There's two schools. There's police and fire. There's highway and there's town government. So that would be six. Fire. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And um, so that's what we're going to go for. And um, six. Okay. And um, Jim, would you like to be more involved with the town government side? Sure. Okay. That'd be good. All righty. Any other thoughts, questions? Motion to adjourn. Make a motion we adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.